So far in the console wars, we've taken a look at the controllers, the SKUs, the design, and the external features. After three rounds, the score is 1-1, and now we're starting to get into the stuff that truly matters and sets these devices apart. In this round, we're taking an in-depth look at the CPUs. It's LP from Techno Buffalo, and welcome to the next installment of the console wars. Back in the good old Nintendo Entertainment System days, no one really talked about CPUs and GPUs when it came down to game console performance. Back then it was all about the bits. First there were the 8-bit systems, then 16, and eventually systems with a whopping 64 bits of graphics processing power. Pretty amazing stuff, but these days you probably wish it was that simple. Game console hardware is something one doesn't slap together overnight. A lot of consideration is put into the hardware because the life cycle of game consoles can be from 5 to 10 years. The most important factor for game console hardware is to be balanced on all levels. This is obviously quite a task to achieve on a limited budget. Some of you guys may remember back in the day when Sony execs introduced the concept of the cell processor and the PS3. The device originally had two HDMI ports that would be capable of outputting two separate 1080p gameplay signals. Well, that didn't exactly happen, and very few games are running at 1080p from the single HMI source. The point is that Sony could have manufactured a device capable of this, but the manufacturing costs would have been unbearable. When it comes down to hardware, the central processing unit is the heart of the system. So this round is the battle between the cell processor on the PS3 and the Xenon CPU on the Xbox 360. The power of the cell processor has been touted around the internet for years now. It's been claimed to be the chip capable of almost supercomputing power. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, the PS3 does not have 7 cores. The Cell Broadband Engine is an IBM PowerPC based solution with a single core controlling 7 synergistic processing elements or SPEs. There's actually 8 SPEs, but a single SPE is disabled for better production yields. Also another SPE is reserved for the PS3's user interface, the XMB. So that leaves a single core and six synergistic processing elements free for games code. So how the cell basically works is that the computational workload comes through the 3.2 GHz core and the core assesses the workload and distributes between the six synergistic processing elements. So you can basically have audio processing handled by one SPE, physics by another, and so forth. It's a fairly simple process in theory, but game coders have noticed over the past few years that it can be a bit tricky in practice. The 360 Xenon CPU is based also on an IBM PowerPC core, but that's pretty much the only thing it has in common with the cell processor. The Xbox 360's processor has three individual cores. No SPEs like the PS3, but three actual cores that can accept computational tasks individually. Multi-threaded code can be easily run on any of the three cores, which makes it a pretty straightforward multi-core solution that has raw computing power. When we start comparing the processors, I think it comes down to two main things. Of course speed, but also functionality. And by functionality in this case, I mean how easy it is to crunch out that speed and power out of that CPU. As the Xbox 360 had a year's head start over the PS3, it managed to get a large enough install base to make it the primary development platform for most games. So the majority of multi-platform games have been made for the Xbox 360 and ported down to the PS3. And because the primary processing element, or the single core, on the PS3 is similar to the single cores on the Xbox 360's processor, it's fairly easy to get the same game working on the PS3, but it's not going to be running as well if you do not take advantage of the 7 SPEs. So a large number of multi-platform games have been running thus far mostly on the cell single core, leaving the synergistic processing elements mostly unused. And unfortunately, it shows. But in any case, it's no secret that because of the Xenon processor, the Xbox 360 is the main development platform for most games because it's that much easier to develop for. Having owned the PS3 from the very beginning, I've experienced enough bad ports to last me a lifetime. But there's absolutely no doubt that the cell processor packs a serious punch. If you have the time and capabilities of optimizing and taking use of all the SPEs of the PS3, you will get an enormous amount of computing power. But that's exactly just it. Game developers these days are pressed for time and money, and capable code writers are not abundant. So the lack of time, money, and expertise have been the reason why PS3 games have been having a tough time competing with the same games on the Xbox 360. So a lot of games have been running on lower frame rates and inferior graphics, and it's definitely a frustrating situation for Sony in particular, as they know that their hardware is capable of so much more. 
Luckily, the PS3 counterparts have been improving as developers learn how to better code for the PS3. But unfortunately, some major developers like Valve have stated that they will not be developing for the PS3 for this reason. It's too much of a hassle and they simply don't have the resources. But the PlayStation 3 and the Cell processor definitely have a few aces up their sleeve, namely some very capable first-party developers like Naughty Dog, who will put in the extra mile to crunch out the PS3's, well, hidden potential. The guys at Naughty Dog have admitted that with Uncharted 2, they've for the first time been able to take almost 100% use of all the PS3's SPEs. And they've actually managed to take a substantial load of graphics processing off the shoulders of the GPU and pass it over to the cell processor, which is definitely an impressive feat, as CPUs normally aren't designed to handle complex graphics calculations. Having played through Uncharted 2, I can say that it's definitely one of the best looking games made to date, and it really shows off how well the PS3 can handle physics, animations, and high-res textures with a constant frame rate. 2009 has been a very good year for Sony. They've finally come out with some IPs that really show off what the PS3 can do that the Xbox 360 can't. And according to the game developers at Naughty Dog and Guerrilla Games, it's largely thanks to the cell processor. But this generation has proven that the time for exclusives is coming to an end. One Sony exclusive like Final Fantasy and Metal Gear Solid are now being developed for the Xbox 360. And even the continuation for exclusivity of the Gears of War series on the Xbox is not confirmed. It's simply a matter of economics. Games are increasingly expensive to develop, and the install base of a single platform is just not enough. Multi-platform games are the future, and from this perspective, no matter how much power first-party developers crank out of the cell processor, multi-platform developers like EA and Ubisoft will not be putting extra hours to make the PS3 counterparts run or look any better than the Xbox 360 versions. In fall 2008, I would have declared the Xbox 360 a winner in this round, but the games released this year have really proven the cell processor's potential. And in my opinion, they've finally shown some stuff that the PS3 can do that the Xbox 360 can't. The Xbox 360 Xenon CPU is more than a capable processor, but game developers have admitted that they've already hit the limits of the CPU. The biggest way to tip the scales for the cell is that it can also handle graphics processing, which enables the PS3 to move beyond the limitations of the GPU. And that is what really sets the cell processor apart from the Xenon CPU on the Xbox 360. The PlayStation 3 takes the processor around by a slight edge and puts the PS3 ahead of the Xbox 360 in the total score. So I guess the 400 million bucks Sony invested in the cell broadband engine is starting to pay off. GPUs are up next, so stay tuned for the next round of the console wars. LP signing out.